Alright, welcome back. This is a Kona shoot. This has 24 inch wheels on it, it's a 26 inch frame and has some bombers on it. But what I'm going to do today is put some gears on it just because I don't really ride it much as a jump bike anymore. It's too much hassle just to take the car out and go to the jump. So I'm going to put some gears on it so I can ride it more like a normal trail bike, get me around and I can ride to the jumps maybe. I'm also going to change the forks out. These are the forks I'm putting on. These are Manzaki Grand Fondo 1. Pretty solid, 120 travel. Has lockout up the top right there. And you can pump air in them, make them super stiff if you need them. Doing big drops. And it has a rebound adjuster right there. So yeah, these should go all right. You're probably thinking, why don't I keep these on? Um, these are a little bit too soft for me at the moment. So I just want to try something a bit stiffer, but you know, could always switch them back if I want to. I'm gonna put this nine speed cassette on, just a SRAM. It's a nine to 34. And then nine speed chain. Derailer, I've got this uh, Z that I've been hanging on to for a long while, probably like a year already. So I've always wanted to chuck it on. So yeah, this Z is made for 10 speed. However, I got a nine speed cassette and I got this Suntour XC expert uh, thumb shifter this is friction so it should be able to work no issues right there pretty cool power control and then yeah gonna need gear cable and housing so yeah just taking off the stem here and yeah i want to note that my old bombers were 185 steerer length so it wasn't just long enough the new ones is a tiny bit longer 186 or something like that so a one mil gain so yeah pretty funny we'll see how that goes but at the moment, I've been running it with this stem lock. You can see the bolt goes all the way through and kind of clamps on the stem and the forks together and hasn't been an issue and I'm running this little spacer. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Taking this off here and taking off the wheel and taking off the forks, they came out pretty easy. All right, so that's basically off. Um, what I need to do is take this crown race off so I can put it on these. And I don't really have the tool, so I'm just gonna have to tap it with a screwdriver yeah so not the best way to do it but uh yeah just make the most of what you got and just take a screwdriver and just put on the edge and just tap it keep alternating both sides as you do it um it might not feel like you're tapping it off but after a while you can see it loosening up and then it'll, it should uh, pop off just like that and then just giving it a quick clean so now i can put the crown race onto the other forks. Just gave that a wipe down as well. Looking pretty good. Here's the other forks. And then, yeah, I just put a little bit of grease around the crown so it's easy to take off again if I want to switch out my forks. And then this tip I learned from one of you guys. Basically, I used to just use the tool and slide it down and hammer it on, but someone said hammer it from the top so you don't damage the race. So I tried that this time and yeah, it worked out well. All right, that's all done. Pretty sweet. So yeah, next thing I wanted to do was there's a little bit of rust left on the steerer. So I just want to give it a quick clean using just a little bit of WD-40 and foil. You just rub it all the way around. And I also left a little bit of WD-40 on there just to, just to protect it. You can kind of see how it looks like that. And then yeah, just putting the forks on and putting the wheel on here as well. It all fit, same size. so. No deal. I did gain a, a little bit of a one mil on the stem or the steerer, but yeah, that's basically it. But yeah, putting everything back on, make sure all the bolts are done up to the right spec. And testing out the forks here. They feel pretty good, feel pretty solid. Uh, I think they should work pretty well. It didn't change the geo too much. I think the old forks were a little bit longer, maybe 130, 140, and this is 120 but I think this frame is actually made for 120 travel. And then here taking off the uh, single speed cog, and it's basically just a normal hub, and I just put single speed cog and spaces on there, and then what you need is a cassette removal tool. I just use my leg for leverage here and the chain whip to get it off, but uh, yeah, it came off fairly easy. And then you just slide those out, save those for another day. And then here putting the new nine speed cassette on, Usually there's a little fatter area where you can line it up to make sure all the cogs fit. And then yeah, just slide those on, not too much to it. I put a little bit of grease on the lock ring here. Uh, you don't have to do it, but I like to do it. And then just tighten it up. That's all ready to go. And then here taking off the chain, old chain. 
probably won't use this chain anymore. I think it kind of stretched out enough. I did check it with my chain checker and it seemed still had a bit of life in it, so I'll see what I do with that. But here, when I chucked it in the back wheel, it wasn't spinning for some reason. For some reason it wasn't spinning and this is the reason why. See how it's not dished out far enough on this side? So I'm just going to run a very thin space on the inside and should do it. So yeah, who was the guy that actually dished this wheel? It was actually me. But yeah, just putting the back wheel on, everything fit with the spacer now, no issues. You can see it spin forward and backwards. Um, and the cassette turns the free hub body still all right. And then putting the rear mech on. Yeah, just a little bit of grease again. Uh, make sure it goes up enough so that little black bit sits on the back of the uh, hanger properly. And then just, yeah, just tighten it up. Make sure it works. So yeah, the spring is already way tighter than uh, what I usually have on my derailleur, so it should be pretty good. But you can actually uh, put the clutch on, lock it like that, and then it makes it uh, super stiff. So maybe when you're doing jumps and stuff, so you can switch it on. And then when you're riding home, you can turn it off. All right, cassette's on, and derailleur is on. I do have to kind of adjust the limit screws here. So yeah, just adjusting the limit screws here. I've shown this before, but basically you want the cog to line up with the, the smallest cog. So basically the top screw is for the one that's smaller. And you can see I've lined it up right there. Just turn it anti-clockwise for it to come out. And then here, same with the other one. It doesn't completely reach, reach the biggest cog. So I just got to wind it out a little bit. But yeah, pretty simple stuff. Here taking off the grips because I'm going to install the shifter now. Um, just used water, <laughs> took a little bit but it came off. And then um, yeah just taking the brake. I thought about running uh, twin brakes for this but I think I'll just keep it just one brake for now. Uh, just so I can keep my bar spin, see if I decide to bar spin. But yeah I think most people would just run two. All right, here it is. I just got it under here. It doesn't go fully all the way, but I think it's gonna have uh, definitely gonna have enough. It goes so wide, but yeah, I'm just gonna put everything together and make sure it works before I put the grips on. So yeah, for some reason the lever for this disc brake lever is a lot bigger where the bolt is, so it doesn't really uh, sit flush with the shifter. I guess this is just sometimes this happens when you're using old and new tech from different brands. But um, here, just cutting the cable, cutting the housing, just make sure you clear, clear it up, file it down if you need to, use a spoke to clear it up and then measure it. I measure it the same as the other line, just in case, uh, yeah, I just want to give it one, one bar spin. But then here, I cut up these ones as well. It took a little bit to cut them to the right length, but yeah, just make sure you cut them long and then just trim as you go. Um, and then here with the derailleur housing, the same idea, just make sure you push down on it to make sure you get the right length and it doesn't stick out too much. But yeah, I was pretty happy with uh, how these turned out. And then here just sliding the gear cable through, uh, just slide it in all the way. Sometimes you have to take the housing back out to put it through, but it should, should go in fairly easy, nothing should be blocking it. And then yeah, just tighten it up on the Remac, and you can see it's starting to work uh, so it works pretty well but yeah it doesn't go all the way all right so it works out that this doesn't work because it doesn't have enough uh, space for the lever to move because of this it sits right up against it when I have it upside down I could run it up the top but it's more than likely if I ever foot this bike or turn upside down it's going to snap this right off um, so I just want to run a lever that's on the bottom. You're not really going to hit the bottom of your bars that much uh, Not on wood So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to switch this with This nine speed one. So this is already nine speed. I had it running on an eight speed So I may as well switch this to the friction Have it kind of right and then I can put that straight on this so yeah, this is my Cross Clydesdale uh, cargo bike build, and initially, well, right now I had the yeah had the nine speed shifter on there, but I was running eight speed cassette, so it was a good excuse just to change it out anyway. I was going to do it 
but um, now I can run this shifter on on the bottom, just a friction shifter, and it should work well with any cassette. But yeah, you can see it works well pretty good, fits with this lever. So yeah, it's really kind of hit and miss, I guess, because this is friction and an old V-brake lever, it works, but then it's the disc ones, disc levers start to change out. But yeah, you can see it works well here, goes through all the gears, even the, the biggest one. So no issues there. So that's all ready to go. And then yeah, I just end up just chucking the grip back on and giving it a quick clean. But that's all done. And then now I can use this shifter on this other bike. And that fit, no problem, of course. So yeah, just rewiring it again, putting it all, all, all it through. And then yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. All right, after all that, I should have checked first, but uh, didn't work. So nine speed shifter and 10 speed derailleur have different pull ratios. So I'm gonna have to try to run friction again. All right, so this is basically the last thing I'm gonna try. Hopefully it clears. I'm gonna have to run it on top, I think. But yeah, hopefully this works, but we'll see. Yeah, usually uh, seven, eight, nine speeds, all the stuff is interchangeable, but when you get to 10, 11, 12, it's kind of a different, different thing. So I guess this is the first time I used a 10 speed derailleur, but yeah, it was a little bit of pain switching it back, back and forth, but I live and learn. All right, so that's basically it. It's gonna have to run on top like that. And you can see the shift is pretty cool. It has uh, friction on this side and then you can do eight speed on this other side how you do that is just basically you loosen this a bit and you can use this little lever here just for grip and you just turn it like that and it goes to indexed but yeah i'm gonna keep it on friction for here and a moment of truth i'll set the camera up and see if that works All right, so it worked, <laughs> pretty stoked. So yeah, I think it really depends on the friction shifter you have and then also the derailleur. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. Uh, I think the Sun Tour shifters, AccuShift has different pull ratio to Shimano as well, just so you know if you're trying to line up a Sun Tour with a Shimano Remac, but um, I'm using friction, so no issues there. But yeah, you can see I can uh, wind it up for a bar spin if I need to. So yeah, if you wrap your gear cables like this, just note that it's going to put a little bit more tension on when it's wrapped. I've got probably like one gear difference. But yeah, you just got to take that into account if you're if you're doing a run at X Games or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter if you're just riding normal. You can still switch through all the gears no matter no matter how you do it. And then here, just adjusting this B screw limit here because it was a little bit stretched out and I wanted the cog a little bit closer. So you just wind that out um, until it's a little bit closer to the biggest cog. I have it on the biggest, uh, yeah, biggest cog at the moment. And then just give it a back spin and see if it's running smooth, which it is for me. And then I end up just winding a little bit in just to make sure that screw doesn't fall out as well. But yeah, it works pretty well, can uh, switch through all the gears, no issues, just cutting off the cable here, and then yeah, you can hear, here I'm just showing you going up through the gears. Obviously it's easier with the bike stand as well, I'm just kind of lifting it up and then trying to switch it as I go, but here you can see it goes to, goes to the highest gear. So yeah, all good to go on that, that's all running, running smooth. Uh, so yeah, pretty stoked with how that turned out as well. Finally, after <laughs> all those tries of different shifters. And here, just waxing up the chain using Smooth Lube. Uh, shout out, boot bike. Yeah, this works pretty well, been using a bit. Okay, if you never had suspension forks before, took me a while to work out too, but this, this is kind of how it works. You have this one for lockout, and if you just wind it all the way, like that, what it's gonna do is if I press down on here, the forks aren't gonna compress. 
And then next up we have this, which basically you can turn it left or right. Right now I have it all the way loosened, which means it's gonna bounce up really fast. And then if I turn it the other way, it's gonna bounce up a lot slower. So yeah, the reason why you want it to bounce up quick is if you're doing big jumps, you want it to kind of bounce back to hit the next one. But if you're riding trails, you probably want it to be more even when it's going up and down. And then the last thing is you can unscrew this. And then inside here is a valve you can pump up. Basically just gonna use one of these to pump it up. This is a shock pump, it has a gauge on it so you can see how much pressure you can put in these forks. They do have guides online, usually in the manual, on how much you should put in for your weight. And then this has a valve that has two screw-in bits here. So when you screw it in, you have it together. So yeah, that's screwed in and you can see it's about 25 PSI or two, maybe 2.2 bar. I'm gonna pump it up to three bar. Okay, that's about three something. I just gave it a little bit more. And then now that you've pumped it up, what you wanna do is unwind the top bit first. So this black bit here, you can see it's gonna pop off just like that. That way, all the air pressure is gone now, so you can unscrew this second part without it losing pressure, just like that. The reason why that is, is if you unwind both of them together at once, air pressure is going to leak out as you're unwinding. And what this black thing does, it adds a little chamber in there. So you can kind of unwind it without letting out too much pressure. When you ride, it's personal preference and how much you weigh, but I like to run mine about three bar on the top one. Every fork's going to be different. And then I like to run high spring back rate, maybe uh, high to medium. And yeah, run it fa fairly stiff. And that's basically it. The bike is super fun to ride. I'm glad I did the mods to it. I gotta fix up the back wheel. The axle's loose for some reason, so I gotta probably just re-dish it. And yeah, big thank you for Tim. Most of the parts on the upgrade was part of his donation. And yeah, hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.